Mr. Reardon? Mr. Reardon? Frank Ballinger, Detective Lieutenant M Squad, a special detail of the Chicago Police. Ordinarily, an old man's suicide wouldn't come to my attention, but Van Derden wasn't an ordinary man. He had been prominent in civic affairs and owned a considerable portion of downtown Chicago. Jerry Range from Homicide wanted the cooperation of M Squad that Reardon had died by his own hand. It was locked from the inside, Frank. They had to break it open to get to him. Well, what about the window? That was locked on the inside, too. Well, how long had Reardon been sick? Well, he had a history of minor strokes over the past two years. He was partially paralyzed. It was in the wheelchair. Huh? So he wheeled it over by the fireplace, turned on the gas, and... That's the picture. We think he took a sedative first. The coroner found all the expected symptoms of death from inhaling gas. Did he leave any note? Yeah. Parker, let Frank see the note. Well, how old a man was he? Fifty-five. Who found him? His wife, the maid, the chauffeur. Well, thanks. Dearest Ruth, I can't go on living. Please forgive me. I love you, Arthur. So tight on that machine? We think so. I'll check it out down to yeah. the lab. Well. Jerry, this looks old and shut. An old man, he's sick, locks the door from the inside, writes a suicide note, and turns on the gas. Why'd you call me? Ridden was a big shot. The state's attorney has bothered about a couple of other ingredients. Like what? The old man had six million bucks. A new young wife. This is your first job as a chauffeur, Mr. Lawson? Yes. You say that you drove Mrs. Reardon to the theater. What time did you leave the house? Quarter to eight. Well, like eight o'clock. All right, eight o'clock. While Mrs. Reardon was at the theater, uh, what did you do? Came home. Did you talk to Mr. Reardon? Yeah, I knocked on the study door and he said, come in. Asked him if he wanted anything, and he said no. So I went to my room and looked at television. Left here about 20 minutes to 11 to pick up Mrs. Reardon. Can uh, you confirm this? When I finish work in this house, I go to my room and mind my business. <laughs> okay, go on. We came home, I put the car in the garage, and I heard Mrs. Reardon screaming. Did you hear her scream? She woke me up. I ran downstairs, and she was pounding on the study door. You could smell gas all over the first floor. Well, then what? And Paul ran in from the garage. You broke down the door? Mrs. Reardon said to. It was locked from the inside. And? Well, I turned off the gas and carried Mr. Reardon in here. Mrs. Reardon said to phone the doctor. But he was dead. He'd been dead for some time. Dr. Eldridge came over and said because of the suicide business, he'd have to call the police. No. Where's Mrs. Reardon now? She's in her room. Dr. Eldridge came again this morning. She's taking it pretty bad. Sure. Broken-hearted. You don't agree? Well, let's have it. What's on your mind? Nothing's on my mind at all. Just like Paul says. She's broken-hearted. was kind, generous. He had courage. That's why I just can't believe that he did this. Did uh, your husband ever mention suicide before? 
just once, after his last illness, he hated being helpless. He felt like he was a burden to me. But he wasn't. I love taking care of him. Did anything happen recently that might have disturbed him? On you know, business, possibly emotionally? Lieutenant, I've given a heavy sedation. I've been prepared for this death. It's still been a shock to all of us. Oh, of course. I was given to understand that Mrs. Reardon is 26 and that her husband was 55. Is that correct? Yes, but the difference in ages didn't matter. They were very happy. Or well, was he sick before they got married? Yes, he'd had a heart condition for several years. Then he had his first stroke about six months after the wedding. In other words, out of two years of marriage, he spent 18 months in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Reardon was partially paralyzed? Yes, that's why he needed a chauffeur. He thought a great deal of Paul. What did uh, Mrs. Reardon think of Paul? Don't make that mistake, Lieutenant. She was devoted to Arthur. I know. All right, thank you very much, Doctor. A lovely wife and a handsome young servant don't always spell trouble or murder. But we'd seen the pattern before. And we had to look at every angle and listen to every story until we were sure. Mr. Reardon just buried and those two giving each other looks, even at the funeral. I just had to come and tell you, they wanted him to die. No, that's a pretty serious accusation to bring against Mrs. Reardon. Can you prove it? I saw them kissing just this morning. And the kiss is your proof. Isn't that enough? With Mr. Reardon dead, she's free to marry again. You say Paul and Mrs. Reardon uh, went out together? Ask at the Cafe Royale. Ask about how many times she and Paul had dinner and danced half the night. They're in love. Uh-huh. Well, uh, we'll check it out. I'm a respectable woman. I think the truth should be told. All right, Bertha, thank you very much for coming down. Is that all? Yeah, that's all. Aren't you going to do something about it? For instance? Question them. Make them tell the truth. The truth about what? Like I told you, they're in love. Make them admit it. Let her go, Frank. Look, sick old husband, healthy young wife, muscle boy chauffeur. It's the same old story. So you knock off Mr. Reardon and inherit six million dollars, huh? I don't know. Ah, it's a classic pattern. It's been done before. Well, I'll have them both watched. But supposing Paul or Mrs. Reardon turn the gas on their room. How come that the window and the door were locked from the inside? Huh? That's a good question. I had nothing to go on except the fact that Ruth and Paul went dancing together. When I dropped in at the Café Royale, the head waiter confirmed the maid's story. He'd known Ruth as a showgirl who was usually broke. I decided to get to know her better. Lieutenant, I just don't understand. Do you have a right to ask me all these questions? I'm afraid I do, Mrs. Redden. Look, before you got married, you were in uh, show business, weren't you? I was a dancer. What of it? Well, I mean, did you uh, work a lot? No, not very much. I made a living, though. How good a living? You think I married Arthur for his money, isn't that it? I didn't say that, Mrs. Reardon, you did. How many times did you go out with Paul Lawson? I didn't keep count. But each time it was at Arthur's suggestion. I liked to dance. He knew it. I spent an awful lot of time taking care of him, and he realized that once in a while I needed a change. Yeah, but how much of a change? Are you suggesting that Paul and I are in love with Mrs. each Reardon, other? Mrs. Reardon, part of my job is to ask questions. You're a very beautiful woman. And your husband is sick and There's never older. been anything between Paul and me and Yeah, but does Paul know that? We never discussed it. Who hired Paul in the first place? Arthur didn't drive. I put an ad in the paper for a chauffeur. Paul applied. After Arthur interviewed him, Arthur hired him. Well, how many other applicants did Arthur interview? Two or three, I don't remember. Were any of the other applicants uh, young? Just what's behind all these we questions? We just want to make sure that your husband's death was a suicide. I'm merely looking for information. My husband took his own life. He was tired of the pain. Then there were no disagreements over Paul. What do you mean by that? Do you that? know what I mean? None. It may not look like my going out with Paul, but that's the way it was. Arthur knew all about it. I made a promise to him, and I kept it. Well, what kind of a promise? I don't 
think that's any of your business. And from now on, you can talk to my attorney. Get anything out of her? Yeah, a little. How about you? Well, I found this in Reardon's desk. It uh, looks like the chauffeur typed it. Mr. Reardon, car needs a front-end alignment job. Please advise when we'll be okay. Paul. Oh. Well, should we go to the lab? Mm -hmm. I took the typewriter samples to police headquarters myself. Our technicians in the lab can learn a lot from the way a letter is typed, from the way the keys are struck and from the writer's rhythm. A few hours later, Sergeant Parker, one of the department's graphology experts, came to M Squad. Stuff we know Reardon typed. The letters he hit with his right hand are much lighter than those he hit with his left hand. His typing is very characteristic because of the partial paralysis in his right arm. Well, what about fingerprints? Reardon's weren't on the suicide note. They should have been. Well, what'd you get when you compared the note with the one that Paul wrote about the car? 39 distinct points of similarity in rhythm and pressure used in striking the keys. In other words, Paul wrote the suicide note. I'd bet a year's pay he wrote both of them. We better get a search warrant and take a look at this room, huh? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Parker. I'd bet two years' pay. Lawson typed that suicide note. Stands to reason he didn't do it alone. If he wanted to get close to that six million bucks, he had to get close to Mrs. Reardon. But Mrs. Reardon swears that her husband knew about her dates with Lawson. Did you find anything? Oh, I don't know. An oil can with some string around it. Very incriminating. Reardon knew they went dancing. That's her story. Suppose it's true. Still doesn't mean he uh, knew they'd fall for each other. Somehow I think she's leveling, though. So you think they were just good friends, eh? Well, they all are in the beginning. I remember my first murder. Well, this isn't my first murder. I love you, darling. Have courage, Ruth. Okay, so she's a liar. Have courage to kill a sick old man. You know, Frank, they're both in this thing up to their necks. Oh, Bertha, would you have Mrs. Reardon and Paul come to the study? I'd like to talk to them, please. Mrs. Reardon's gone out. Oh? Did she say where she was going? No, sir. What about Paul? Well, he's out, too. They go out together? I don't know. Well, how long ago did they leave? Oh, ten minutes ago, maybe fifteen. I'll put out an APB on him, Frank. Yeah, you better, because I want to talk to Mrs. Redden. Right. Who closed these doors? I did. They're supposed to be closed when the room's not in use. What's the matter, Bertha? Is something bothering you? I'm so afraid. All alone here. A death in the house. Well, there's a policeman outside. I can have him brought in. No, no. It, it won't be necessary. I'll be all right. You know, Bertha, you said something before about seeing Mrs. Reardon and Paul kiss. Well, how'd all that happen? Well, uh, they acted like they were going to kiss. Did you see him kiss her? It looked that way. She moved very close to him. Well, they actually didn't kiss. You're in love with Paul. You'd like to hurt him, wouldn't you? No, no. But he can see no one else. He can't think straight because of her. <laughs> Tell the truth, Bertha. So you went to the police. You know your trouble, Bertha? You're stupid. You oiled the lock on the study door. I saw you do it. I know how you killed him, and the police are going to figure it out pretty fast. They've already found the oil can. They won't find me here in this house. A great ladies' man. All you want is her money. She'll never marry you. Unless you talk. No, Paul. I, I won't talk. You drag me down, I'll take you with me. I've done it before. Don't cross me. Now, where'd she go? I don't know. I don't know. Hi, Charlie Ballinger. 
Look, would you give me the phone number of a Dr. Robert Eldridge? Yeah, I'll call him at home and I'll hold on. Now, what's that for? Oh, it's just a hunch. Frank, it's all there. The only stumbling block is how Paul got out of that study with the door locked from the inside. Well, hello. I'd like to talk to Dr. Eldridge, please. Oh, this is Lieutenant Ballard, Germ Squad. Uh, yes, Mrs. Eldridge. Well, it's rather urgent that I speak to him. It's in connection with the rear and that. So would you happen to come down here in M-Squad as soon as you can, though, please? All right, thank you, Mrs. Eldridge. Goodbye. Hey. I think I got it. You got what? Well, the door was open from the inside. I noticed some fresh oil on the lock the day I looked at it. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. What about Lawson? Okay, you stick with it, huh? Right. Mrs. Reardon just came home. Look, give me an hour, will you? What for? Just give me an hour, and then I'll bring her in. Everything had fallen into place except conclusive proof that Ruth Reardon and her chauffeur were that way about each other. I was hoping my angle would pay off. Mrs. Reardon, I'd like to talk to you about that. Yes, Lieutenant? Mrs. Reardon, your husband didn't type that suicide note. The slight paralysis in his right arm gave him a very definite style of typing. Well, Arthur didn't type it. Who did? Paul Lawson. Paul? Until a few things are cleared up, this is the way the police look at it. Your husband was 55, you're 26, a dancer, mostly unemployed. Mr. Reardon noticed you, you noticed him because he had $6 million. Isn't true. Tell me one thing, didn't the difference in age bother you? Yes, it did. But you married him anyway. Why? Because he was kind. It, it, and he it had was... a lot to offer. This house, a car, everything you ever wanted. And what he had to offer was enough until he got a stroke. Then Paul Lawson moves into the picture, and you fell in love with Paul him. Paul never meant anything to me. You're in love with him, and you encouraged him. Oh, that's ridiculous. Mrs. Reardon, you lied to me once today. This time, I'd like the truth. I never encouraged him. Then how did he get this? I don't know. You don't know? You gave it to him. I didn't. I love you, darling. Have courage, Ruth. Have courage for what? To destroy your husband? I gave that picture to Arthur. Paul must have taken it from him. You mean the message was for your husband? Yes. You said something before about a bargain, some promise you'd made? Yes. Mrs. Reardon, I want to believe you. I really do. But I know how Paul Lawson killed your husband. Paul killed Arthur? Come on, I'll show you. Here, Mrs. Reardon, I want to show you a little trick which you mind holding my hat there. I found this string wrapped around this oil can. And if you'll notice, on the other end of the string is a nail. Now watch. You take that nail, which is tied at the head end, as you can see. And you insert it when you find your tension, it will throw the lock. See how that one little turn throws it? Now you get your tension, and you stick the nail in like this. See? Holding it firmly, and then you pass the string under the door, like this. Making sure you don't get any loops or knots in the string. Then up again over the top, and down. Now at this end of the string, I'm going to tie it to the nail. Can you see that? Making a pretty firm knot so that it doesn't slip until you want it to. There. Moving it out to the end of the nail. Just like that. Now, as you can see, the whole string holds itself, and this is where it is on the outside. Now, all you do is to close the door, screw it out and close it. And then when I pull the string, pull the top part, it's going to actuate this nail to turn the key and throw the lock. Now, watch. Then you retrieve your nail and string under the door by pulling on it, and yet your door is locked. Are you sure you've never seen that trick done before, Mrs. Reardon? No. I haven't. I told you Paul meant nothing to me. 
I don't know, maybe Arthur reprimanded him or something, but, well, I had no reason to want my husband dead, none. All right, Mrs. Reardon, let's go. All right, Lawson, come out from there, you're covered. with your husband over to the fireplace and turn on the gas. Now, I showed you how he locked the door. And he figured with the door locked on the inside, everybody would have to buy the story of suicide. She was in all along. It's been the two of us. That's not true. He's lying. He's vindictive. He heard what I was saying about him. She thought of it first. It was her idea to make it look like suicide. She was fed up with a sick old man. Said she wanted the money and me. Yeah, well, you can talk all you want downtown, Lawson. You too, Mrs. Reardon. Get your coat. Arthur told me the truth about himself before we were married. That he had only about two years to live at the most. He was alone. He wanted somebody to make the end of his life a little more happy. I was alone, too. That was your promise, huh? That you would take care of him as his wife. It began as sort of a bargain. But after we'd been married a few weeks, I realized he was the finest man I'd ever known. I fell in love with him. And since then, I never played around with Paul or with anybody else. She was sick of him, said she wanted him out of the way. She had no motive for killing him. But you didn't know that. What do you mean, Frank? I think that she knew that her husband was going to die. And very soon. You mean all she had to do was wait? Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell us this, Mrs. Reardon? I wouldn't be telling you now if I didn't have to. Arthur was a very respected man in Chicago. I didn't want everybody to know that his marriage had begun as a business arrangement. I didn't want his name cheapened. Ah, uh, she's making this up. She begged me to help her get rid of him. Even gave me her picture. Yeah, we know all about that. She didn't want me to lose my nerve. She didn't want her husband to lose his nerve. Have courage to face death. That's what the inscription on the photograph meant. You're in on this. I'm not going to take the rap for it. Rap alone. Frank. Yeah? Uh, Dr. Eldridge. Oh, you have him come in, please? Doctor. Dr. Eldridge, thanks for coming down. It's all right. Uh, just one question, please. Did Mrs. Reardon know about her husband's pending death? Of course, from the time she married him. As a matter of fact, I told her the day before he died I didn't think he'd live another week. I thank you very much for coming down again. Why should she kill her husband when he knew he was close to death? I'm sorry, Mrs. Reardon. I will drive you home if you like. Paul Lawson is in the death house at Stateville Prison awaiting execution for the murder of Arthur Reardon. Mrs. Reardon is alone again. She might have been there with Lawson if the doctor hadn't proved my angle and if the police hadn't been able to separate the lies from the truth. But that's a policeman's job and that's how we work in my town. Tune in again next week for another exciting story from the files of Ahmad.